Okay, whenever you guys are ready. Hi, my name is Scott McWhorter. I'm the co-chair of this year's Industry 4.0 plenary at the 2019 AICG Spring Meeting and 15th Global Congress on Process Safety. And today I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Sam Samdani, Senior indus Industry Knowledge Expert in the Global Chemicals and Agricultural Practice at McKinsey & Company. Uh, today, Sam gave a talk entitled The Next Digital Leap in AI. Welcome, Sam. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So, in our plenary, you spoke about artificial intelligence as a family of digital tools with some chemical companies testing and piloting specific tools, while others are adopting them more broadly across the organizations. As increasingly data-driven decision-making takes, takes hold over the next five to ten years, how should we think about career planning as the nature of leadership changes over time? Yes, an excellent question, uh, Scott, uh, because historically, you know, overall management, not just specifically the chemical industry, decisions used to be judgment-based. With experience, people acquire judgment, and they get better and better. Now we have a new way of making decisions, which is, of course, experience is important, but it has to be supplemented and complemented with data, evidence. And that's where evidence-based management or data-driven decision-making has taken a, a turn. Now again, a lot of it is sometimes sort of with buzzwords and uh, uh, sort of fashion-driven uh, concepts that come and go, but we believe that this is real. Uh, the reason is that we can show now, again with empirical data, that it leads to better decisions faster decisions and better performance of companies that actually do those decisions based on data, really verifiable um, and sometimes with diverse kind of sources of data that can cross check to make sure that there is validity in the data. So again, a lot of advances in the quality and quantity of data that can be now used to make decisions. Now, again, I'm not saying that judgment-based decision making is gonna go away. Uh, that will continue, but data will allow people now to be more evidence-based and also perhaps take some bias out of decisions because in the past, when judgment was used, it was a bit of a say, okay, this is my best judgment based on experience. Now, how do you know it is not biased by some experience that this person has had? So cognitive bias is now a new thing that we are trying to figure out. How do you de-bias people's decision-making with data? And are, or by that, are you saying that we can become more quantifiable and, and yes. make AI quantifiable and those decisions quanti quantifiable and then sell that to our leadership? Because that's another that's question right. that, I, that I get often is, as a, as a scientist and engineer, you know, when I'm trying to sell these practices to executive management, yep. is it quantifiable and, and how much value does it provide? Yes, it is actually trickling down now from top management as well as we see across industries you know, management is now opening up. Again, they are very much performance driven. Is it leading to better decisions? And there is now wider acceptance and increasingly broader, uh, you know, set of management. Again, some older, I don't want to over generalize, they tend to still feel that, you know, judgment comes from experience, sometimes again, making a lot of mistakes in the past. So you really learn that way. Now we are saying you can learn much faster based on data. And that means even younger people can make more important decisions. So that means career-wise, if you can be data-driven from early on, potentially you can move faster uh, in your career as well. Excellent. So um, much of the public discourse on, on data science and AI tends to focus on Hollywood thematics, you know. So we see movies such as The Terminator or Westworld, you know. So what are your picks of lesser known or underappreciated practical applications of these technologies that are poised to create positive and sustainable impact on, in business and society at large, kind of that broad yep. scale impact. Again, great question, uh, but I'm going to say that really, you know, Hollywood, as you said, you know, those are the sexy things that you see on, on movies and televisions, but the unsexy part, or sometimes even the boring part of big data and AI driven uh, decision making that is leading to real value are the things that companies have been doing for decades, uh, if not longer, 
but now bringing some more rigor and empirical evidence that is leading to better decisions. And again, I'm going to make that point again and again, saying that are the qualities of the decisions better than they used to be? And now we have been able to show the answer is yes. So companies that are much more advanced in their analytics, and some of it is artificial intelligence based, others are traditional analytics, going back to sort of regression based analysis, uh, you name it. Now, what we see is the companies that have adopted you know, data-driven analytics, look at their total return to shareholders, return on invested capital, those kinds of very hard financial metrics that we can apply, saying that those are the companies that are doing better. Um, now, as I said, you know, these are sometimes you'd say arguably boring or not that sexy, but the question is, is it leading to impact? For yes. companies to the bottom line. And I think that's what all companies are going yes. to value in the end. What's the impact? What's the value to the company? Yes. So, so kind of building on that, what are the challenges? What are some of the, the critical technical challenges show, slowing the adoption of advances in analytics and, and AI? I know we've got a, got a number of questions in this area today, and, and how can chemical engineers and AICG members help to address some of these challenges? Yeah, I mean, within AICHE, I see, you know, experienced engineers, students, undergraduate and graduate students, I think they have huge opportunity to really contribute both in the application of AI in some high impact areas, but also making some fundamental contribution to the science of AI. And that's why in, in one of our uh, discussions we are talking about artificial intelligence is still, it's sort of the alchemy stage. It has not become a chemistry yet. Now. You could argue, you know, should we wait until, you know, it becomes a chemistry and apply? My answer is no. You really have to see it. Again, the example that I gave is a steam engine. The folks who actually developed the steam engine, they did not know anything about thermodynamics because thermodynamics was still 100 years away. Uh, but the thermodynamics came and say, okay, this is the theoretical efficiency of the engine. So you should try to improve how far you can get too close to the theoretical efficiency. So. There will be advances in artificial intelligence in a similar way on the science of it, but that is probably for the students and professors you know, working on making those fundamental contributions. But I see engineers in industry really applying what is known today and test their limits to go, how far can we take those tools and techniques and get the most value out of it. Uh, great, great answers. So, so Sam, I want to Thank you for sharing your unique perspectives on in, in this area today, and uh, uh, and, and hope, hopefully you'll come back next year and, and talk with us again about this. Subject. It will be a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.